Okay, so we're going to be practicing with some basic uh, data management commands. So let's go ahead and open our session. We go to the North Carolina location and our user number one map set. And go ahead and... Okay, our session is open now and we switch to our command console and we're going to be... Uh, we already learned how to list uh, what the data we have available, whether it be raster or vector, with the glist command, right? You remember that, g.list, and if you see it for vector data, it will give us all the data we have on the vector data set, and we do the same thing for raster, and that will give us all available data for the rest raster data sets. Um, we are going to learn today how to see what map sets we have available to us, what's what we have access to, and what we can modify. For that, we're going to use the G map, oops, map sets command, and we add the flag LP. You need to look at the tutorial notes. Uh, there are links that will give you a better explanation what the flags will do and actually more instances of the map sets command so you can try them out. So for this exercise we're going to use the g.mapsets uh, flag lp and it, it gives us two lines, just two lines. First one is permanent landsat sqlite user1 and permanent user1 landsat. These are map sets within our grass gis installation that we have access to the first line are map sets that we can access to get information out of the second line are map sets that we can modify information within we have access to the permanent map set because we created that map set when we were doing our installation uh, for this project and user one this is our own working map set and we also have access to Landsat. Uh, that's another map set that we, I created earlier. But on the top part, if you can see, I can access the SQLite to get data out of, and but I cannot modify anything on it because I did not create it, that folder. So that gives you a better idea what can you modify and when you cannot. If you're working with different people and you set up uh, working project for somebody else, they will not have access for permanent folder. It will show up as they have access to it on the first line, but not that they can modify it. And they'll be, you know, their own username, user two, three, four, or whatever uh, custom username you use. So hope hope this is clear. Again, you can follow the tutorial links so you can get uh, uh, more examples and other explanations of what the uh, map set command will do with the difference with the different flags and options that it has there's another useful command that we're going to be working with today and that will be the map set command or option and for that we're going to do as follows first we need to find out what the what commands we have available, uh, what map sets we have available. So we use the command we learned earlier, map sets and the flag LP. So we have a user one and Landsat as well as a permanent data sets or map sets available for us to use. So let's go ahead What's on? find out what's on Landsat folder. For that, we're gonna use the map sets command. I'm sorry, map set command. So we use it as follows. We type the uh, g dot list command uh, with the RF flag. And uh, let's find out what vector data types we have on our map, map set call land set. This will give us the, uh, the vector data that we have available on that specific map set as you can see there are no vector files on that and let's see if there are any raster files in there so we go back and we use the same command we just change it for raster rst so g.list.flag f rast map set equal length 
And let's see, we do have so few raster files within the map set Landsat. And we can also do the same thing with our permanent map set, find out what data we what raster raster data we have on that map set. Permanent. So and we can do the same thing for vector. So as you can see that the map set and map sets commands are very different. They use in different manners. Map set one single map set is to look within or to search within a map set the type of data that we have in it. And the command map sets that's to list uh, a com or a command to list all of the uh, map sets that we have available within a certain instance of GRASGIS. Hope that's clear. If it's not, um, you can read more about the command and the different flags and the tutorial notes. There's links that will take you to the um, site where you can learn more about the this commands and also the flags and other options and examples that you might find. And now we can combine the commands we learned earlier with this and we can find some other stuff pretty good. So g.mlist we want to search for uh, raster data on the map set oops, map set ah, called Landsat Landsat and we want to look for any file that has the letters ls and m so that would list of files, all files that has ls within their file name on in the Landsat map set of the raster type files. So once we hit enter, we get a list of all those commands. Um, earlier, we found out there are no vector commands, so I'm not going to try with vector commands. But we can try the vector command on our permanent map set. So let's use vector. And let's change the Landsat to our permanent map set, permanent. And let's use ls for maybe ra. And let's find out uh, a list of all the files that has ra between the name on our permanent map set of the vector type files. And that will give us a list of those files, only five files. So this is how you will mix and match the commands we learned earlier. And we're going to go further with that now. And we're going to do some copying and deleting files um, that we might be using. OK, so now that we know how to look for stuff, how to for other files, uh, we're going to move on and we're going to start copying files to our own map set so we can modify those map sets. Um, to copy a file to our current map set, we use the uh, G copy module, uh, G dot copy, and we use it as follows: G dot copy, and we want to copy a vector kind of file. But wait, before that, let's go ahead and list um, what uh, data we have available, um, so we have a better uh, pick up name, so we can copy that file. Uh, uh, let's use vectors. And looking at this on the permanent map set, let's look for a file and let's go ahead and pick uh, bridges. We're going to work with bridges. We're going to copy the bridges file to our map set. So to do that, we're going to use the g.copy uh, vector data type. And we want to tell it um, what file we want. Vector file call bridges from our permanent permanent map set uh, followed by comma and the new name of the file we want to copy to into our, our file we can use same name but so you don't get all confused usually you know use a variation of the name so you know it's not from the same data set for me I use my and then the name of the bridge of the file that we copy and bridge oops so we're using the uh, command g.copy, a vector file called bridges on our permanent data set 
and it's going to copy it to our current map set under the name my bridge or bridges keep it the same so once we do that we hit enter and it uh, what uh, did I misspell that I probably did bridges let's see g copy vector bridges per oh Permanent. There you go. I misspelled it. So maybe I gotta be careful with those. So we're gonna copy a file called bridges from our with the gcopy command on the vector type file called bridges from our permanent map set into our current map set under the name my bridges. So once we have all that, we hit enter and you look at the confirmation on the screen. And once it's done, we can go ahead and look on our own map set see if that file is there so we use the command a i'm sorry g dot and list and we use vector command on our map set and it's called usr1 so this will list the uh, oops the files on that we have on that set This is the end of tutorial number five. Uh, by now you're familiar with the proper naming convention for Grass GIS. You also learn how to list files within a specific map set. Um, you use some wildcard uh, cards to search for files within map sets and also uh, the entire Grass GIS map set structure. And you also learn how to copy and delete files. And that's it for this tutorial. And at the end of the, if you check out the tutorial notes, there are other links and uh, information that will help you uh, better understand this tutorial. And I hope you come back for the next tutorial.